I want to take uh, Rocky to Lady Gaga in December. So where would I go to find the tickets, find out what's coming up in the area, and get into the event world? And we're going to talk to Eventful about what's been happening, because they've been in business for seven years, and they've seen a lot going on, and they have a lot to say about events. Who are you? I'm Jordan Glazier. I'm CEO of Eventful. Uh, Chicago boy originally, uh, born and raised. Michigan undergrad, went to Kellogg. Um, enjoyed uh, seven years at Boston Consulting Group and consulting before I um, did, uh, ran international for a company in Chicago and then spent five years at eBay um, building consumer practicals uh, in business to business for them. And I've uh, been at Eventful now for almost six years. Yeah. So what's happening in the event space? What, what, what are you guys seeing since you're one of the one of, if not the leading event calendar websites on the on the sure. market? Well, the approach we've taken is at Eventful is to um, first of all have amazing content. So we have the world's largest and most comprehensive selection of local events. We've taken a very global approach to local content. So it's a global platform for local events. Um, secondly, we built a fairly large audience. We now are approaching <coughs> 20 million registered users, wow. and um, Something we learned very early along the way are a couple things. One, personalization is very important. So for 20 million people, we know not just who they are and where they are, but what they like, so that we can map content to them that, and recommend events to them um, based upon an internal recommendation engine. W what kind of personalization do you do? Do you, do you know that I like Lady Gaga, for instance? We talked about that. Sure. So I mean, there's two uh, paths that a user would take into Eventful. Um, Either they come to, come to the site and like what they see and register to receive email newsletters, um, or if they want to input content in the, to the site, they would need to register, otherwise they can use the site without registering. And the other path is through our demand it service that lets people actually impact the events that happen in their market by demanding that they occur. And the interesting thing there is that entertainment marketers, event organizers, are actually paying attention to that data of where there's demand for future events and planning events accordingly. So it actually there is a, an outcome. There have been over 100, 150,000 events that have occurred already as a direct result of people demanding them in their local market. Y you showed me some examples of films, right, <coughs> that y you can actually go to a very targeted market, like yeah. a college market, yeah. and say, hey, who, who wants this film to be shown on their college campus? And, and people around the world all say, yeah, my, my college, my college, yeah. right? You know, it's interesting. There's, there's sort of two layers of, of demand it. There's a self-service layer where bands push it to their fans, to, or bands and other performers <coughs> and celebrities push it to their fans with the very explicit intent of gather, using it to gather data and empower their fans to be part of the process so that they can make informed decisions about where to tour. And the reason that they do that is because there's a password protected dashboard where the performers of their management actually have access to the data to make those decisions. Um, the second layer is something that, w that we've done now about 150 times which are social media marketing campaigns for film studios, for authors, for um, video game publishers, for um, broadcasters, for musicians, where it, it's a, it sort of combines the power of demand it with um, our incumbent audience of entertainment uh, consumers. So for example, um, with the film studios, we've worked with most of them, I mean, all of the, all of the large ones and, and many of the you know, mid-tier and, and, and several independent filmmakers as well. And what's interesting about the film industry is they, there's constantly new product coming out. They need to build a new uh, audience for each film. And so what we're able to do is, for example, with um, Chronicle, we, we just ran a campaign for Chronicle for Fox, where Chronicle was trying to reach college students and they wanted to do some screenings on college campuses. So in the normal way of doing that, you roll out to 10 colleges, you'd invite some students, you'd fill some screens, and you'd get you know, 10 times 300 people, as 3,000 people would be uh, exposed to your, your film in advance. When they use demand it, we, put a, we, we market the trailer and the, you know, the graphics to all the college students in our database, or those that map to the profile and say, hey, check out this trailer. If you want a free screening of this film to come to your college for a midnight showing in advance of release, demand it. And uh, what's interesting about that is, you know, for the same effort of putting on 10 screenings, instead of getting to 3,000 people, 15,000 people demanded this film, saw the trailer, engaged with the, the film, 
um, felt a sense of ownership and participation. And that's frankly on the smaller side of, of these types of campaigns. That was just a recent one. It ran for just a couple of days. Um, usually it's you know, north of 50, 100,000. The largest we've seen is about one and a half million people who demanded, in, in the case of paranormal activity, which was a couple of years ago. One, one thing I like about you, and, and one of the reasons I, have, I wanted you on my show, um, is you're very consistent about who you're going after. You're going after the mainstream market. We, when you were first on my show about five years ago, we had these discussions. Like, there's some event companies that go just after me. <laughs> yeah. You know, people yeah. who are going to South by Southwest, mm -hmm. who are in San Francisco, who have an iPhone, right. and who are looking for something different than mm -hmm. just what, what movies and what rock bands are right. playing this weekend. But you guys have always been consistent about that. What's changing about the mainstream market now that you're seeing? Is, is Facebook changing how y you're thinking about this mainstream market? Or? Sharing is a relatively advanced feature for a mainstream audience. Yeah. It's an obvious feature for any early adopter. Um, so for us, when people are engaging with our content, our sharing rates are in the 5 to 20% range. That's pretty high. Which is pretty high. Um, but I don't, you know, we haven't seen that change very much. We, we, you know, we've always been plugged in with Facebook and MySpace and Twitter and email and so forth, so made it sort of easy with one click for people to share. I haven't, we haven't really seen too much of a trend in terms of increased sharing. Um, what we have seen is um, the thrill and sense of ownership around demand it is um, sort of this a mountain that keeps building. We, we see that in our own user base. Our users love demand it. They love, and the, so there's really two sides of our business. There's demand it and discovering local events. Yeah. On the demand it side, there's, it's a benefit for being an eventful user because not only do you get to make it happen, but then you get early or preferential access to the entertainment. So in the case of um, yep. Chronicle, just using that because it's recent, um, not only, you know, eventful users got to determine which, that get this movie to come to their school and then got to go to see a free movie. Yeah. And it was only people who had used Eventful that got that, uh, that benefit. And the mu uh, movie house pays you to do these? Yes, because we're marketing it to our user base. Yeah. We're putting custom campaigns together and graphics and, um, and then filling the house for them. And there was um, the painstaking approach to actually determining where to go and then filling those screenings. Um, we've, it's sort of, we've, we're, we're, I think we're onto a better mousetrap there. You guys are located in San Diego. Yeah. So you're, do you think that helps you be closer to the entertain, entertainment industry and not so in love with the technology industry? Because so you know, LA is. I definitely certainly see that split, right? It's really interesting building a technology company outside of Silicon Valley, because yeah. you are um, not shackled by the uh, the need to please early adopters and the tech industry. Um, we, we don't we, you know we don't give that much thought frankly we are so focused on what what is mainstream and what's generally interesting that I mean frankly you know some of the early adopted I remember with your your comment around the plan cast um, uh, you know some ideas of things that they could have done you know we've tried all those with eventful and seen that they did not get adopted by mainstream um, by mainstream users so yeah. you know what I find really interesting about eventful and our audience is that they they use the web to to get out to get away from the computer. Yeah, they're using Eventful to find out something to do in the real world. So when I look at you know traditional metrics for a website, where if you if they come in you know do a search on Google and come over to your site and they bounce or exit after you know 25 seconds, that seems sort of a failure. Our our, our time on site's a lot longer than that, but. But to illustrate, you know, if a, if a user comes in from Google, spends 25 seconds, and leaves, survey says we have just delighted them. Yeah. Because they came in, got the information that they needed to get away from the computer and go see the movie or go get to see the concert or, you know, go to the, you know, the, the street fair or whatever it is. Tell me a little bit about um, what it looks like, you know, when, when I first get in there. What, what do you ask me for and, and uh, what does it look like to use it? Sure. So um, I'll give you a couple of different use cases. If you came into the home page, which is actually the minority, vast, the very tiny minority of our users, you'd see an overview of what we have. It's find out what's happening or make something happen, yep. you know, demand it. And we very quickly get people into flows of either search or browse by either venue or performer or date or category of events. Are um, you tracking that? And, and does that uh, inform what I see in the future? You know, if I click on. ACDC and Skrillex, is that what I'm going to see in the future? Or, or Only if you register and indicate to us that they're favorites. So we're not um, observing it 
um, for, uh, for unless you're a signed in registered user. On the demanded side, you'd actually first discover, for the most part, you'd discover demanded outside of Eventful. It's not about people coming to Eventful and, and saying, oh, let me, let me see who I want to come to my market. It's about people who are in the midst of interacting with their favorite performer. And the performers are saying, hey, if you want me to come to your market, demand me. And then they come into Eventful. <clears throat> There's a very simple uh, data input, which you, you tell the Eventful and therefore the performer your zip code, your year of birth, and your gender. For the performer, this sounds like a great way to, to um, firm up the audience that's on Twitter or Facebook yeah. or other places, right? <coughs> Lady Gaga could tweet, hey, if you want me to come to your town, you better get it on yeah. this site and, yeah. and yeah. demand it. And a lot of them do. And, and the reason that they use it, use demand it and eventful in addition to Facebook or Twitter is because, and what we hear from them all the time is, Facebook and Twitter in particular, th there's so much frenetic energy. There's yeah. a ton of energy. Um, eventful demand it helps them siphon that energy to a very specific data stream, which is, you know, and if, you, if you look at Facebook or Twitter, you'll see the shout outs. Oh, you know, come to Connecticut. Oh, come to Tallahassee, you know, it, stuff like that. But Eventful actually puts that data into a structure. That, Twitter that, it alone is moving so fast now you can't keep up with it. Right. I, during the Super Bowl, I was searching on the word Madonna, mm -hmm. and there was 50,000 <coughs> tweets a minute. You cannot read it. It was going <laughs> I, I have an app called uh, Streamboard that lets me uh, see it in real yeah. time. It's unbelievable. You can't read it. it. It's physically impossible to read. So these performers need to move that data, those yep. people off somewhere yes. else that they can actually integrate with them. Yeah, so there's, they're siphoning that energy into a, a, a structured format so they can actually look at, okay, which, where, are, where is the demand by city? And then within the performer dashboard, there's a very rudimentary but highly effective contact tool. So you can go in, you can click on St. Louis. You can type a message and hit send. You know, great news, I'm coming. Click here, <coughs> click here to buy tickets, hit send. And it goes just to people in St. Louis who demanded you, which doesn't exist in any other um, tool that performers have at their disposal. So, um, and then- You guys don't have a lot of other integration with Facebook or Twitter other than share it right now, but you We generally have sharing. We've got Facebook login. Um, we have um, like face piles and things like that throughout the site so you can see of your, you know, which of your friends also like different venues or performers or, event or eventful in general. Okay, are you gonna do more integration over the next yeah, year? Yeah, that's, that's uh, continues to be a priority for us. Okay, and you guys use the email a lot, right? Yeah, email has been, uh, a, a real surprise for us in a, in a, in a positive way, which and we've been uh, kind of we're kind of old hat at, at, the, at this point. Um, you know, five years ago we built an email platform internally because we wanted to be able to send personalized communications. So to you're not user. using Mailchimp or something like that. No, you we're built not. your own. I, you know, of the you know, 27 steps, step 27 is it goes out through uh, you know I, I believe it's SendMail. So th for the very last, but all the email composition, the data analytics, and everything else. Um, and the, and the uh, composite compilation of the content all happen through internal systems. And, and we did that because we, at the time, you know, now we've got approaching 20 million registered users, but at the time we had two or three million, which was still sizable. And we had millions of events, and we had recommendation engines, and we had, you know, we had all this content that we needed to be able to siphon so that you know, when, when an email goes out, when you get your weekly events guide on Monday, it hits our APIs and database 20 or 30 times to personalize the content to map to your specific interests, and no third-party system is capable of that that we've found. So Rocky's email, will he'll get ACDC and the Stones, right? Absolutely. And I'll get Lady Gaga and Skrillex, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and the, neither will the two meet. Right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. And, and the, the um, so when we first rolled out email, we, we did it as a, um, as a reminder to get people to come back to the site was the primary objective. But what we learned very quickly was that people liked it as a standalone communication channel. Yeah. And so um, we morphed it so that it doesn't necessarily, you don't, you can, you, all the information is in there and we are delighting users by um, sending them that information. And there's a really interesting psyche around that that um, we had to discover through just the building out the business, which is people really like pushed content about local events. And you know, we just did a, literally a survey came back last week. You know, we asked the question regularly, you know, how do you like to receive information about events? 75% said email. And it was multiple, you could multiple answer. 75% said email, 50% said online, and single digits said through mobile. Yeah. And what we, it's rather than hunting, people, and, 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 and in the 
Do you commentary. see that change? Because you guys have been around for seven years, yeah. and, and you're very focused on the mainstream. The average mainstream consumer is appreciative of just a list of, hey, here's 10 things you should think about doing this week. The, the hunt, if you leave it to them to hunt and gather, you know, nine times out of 10, they end up on the couch. Yeah. I, nine times out of 10, end up on the couch. But in, and, I, and I even have all that information at my fingertips. So um, people are busy, have lots of stuff going on in their lives. Um, so if you can learn what they like and del push to them some suggestions that map to those interests, you're delighting your users, and that's what we are all focused. You know, that's where 100% focused on is delighting people. You you have added some technology though. For instance, uh, buying tickets. You do that <coughs> with a partnership with like StubHub, right? Yeah. So we have, we we integrate with probably a couple dozen ticketing companies now. Um, so it, it's part of the back end system. So as the you know depending on which event you're on, we are able to direct you to the to the right ticketing company. Interesting. Yeah. Anything else? I, uh, you know, you're about to do integration with Facebook because you're not yet using uh, the likes. Oh yeah, we Facebook. have likes and we have Google Plus. Well, like I've liked 600 bands. Are oh, you? Oh, we have. We haven't imported you? your favorites yet. So yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, right? I mean, we have. Um, See, I'm the, pulling the, you into the tech yeah. world. Now. No, no, the, <laughs> the wiring is there. We just have to, you know, to put the engineering behind. Actually, and we've the wiring is there and the permission is there for tens of thousands of users for us to pull that information. Um, we just need to. Um, take a final step there and then we'll automatically be able to start taking advantage of that information and that you know to, to the extent that people have given us permission to do so very cool and um, the uh, demand it continues to be you know we, we just rolled it out into uh, literary uh, the literary literary world which was really interesting did a campaign for an author um, of a health related book called the end of illness and are you familiar with it? Yeah, I met David Argus. Yeah, I met him in Davos. Yeah, actually. okay. So, so he's Steve Jobs' doctor. Yeah, so exactly. So he he's got a book coming out, and we um, did a campaign where you could demand the end of illness, um, the the book, and the people who demanded are able to. Some subset of them are going to get um, uh, like a webinar from him, you know, with a lot of direct communication and copies of the book, and you know, there's a bunch of things that people get as part of that, but. It stands on its own merits, and there was other efforts as well. But yeah. right after our campaign, it's um, we found out it's going to be coming out at number one on the New York Times bestseller list. Yep. So um, that felt good. So we like being, you know, part of making things successful like that. Very cool. Where do we learn more about you guys? At eventful.com. And are you on Twitter and Facebook as well? At eventful. E eventful. Yep. Thank you so much for coming out. Absolutely. Thank you very much for having me.